What's up, Packer fans? This is Coach Hahn with you on behalf of Packernet.com. Back in the film room, got an awesome question via Facebook from Peter Thomas. Peter asked me, what do you think the offensive line for Houston can do, and what can the Packers do to keep Watson in the pocket and then attack him? Excellent question. Um, so I'll, I'll show you a couple of clips from some of their previous work against Baltimore. I selected Baltimore because their defense is schematically very, very similar to Green Bay. Um, Wink Martindale, the, the D coordinator for Baltimore, uh, came up through the Baltimore ranks, came over from Denver, actually right when Mike Pettin left Baltimore as the outside backers coach and then went on to the Jets and the Bills and the Browns and then eventually the Packers. So very, very similar defensive philosophy. We can see some of the things that Baltimore did very well against Houston. They got Deshaun Watson on the ground uh, four times for a sack in this game en route to a victory. And we all know Deshaun Watson, he's shifty. He's tough to bring down. He can take hits in the pocket and climb through it. So let's take a look at a few things that the, the Packers can do schematically when watching this Ravens film and ways that they can attack Houston. So here we have Houston, third and one situation late in the first quarter. Um, you're gonna watch this H back right here. The the. Texans are in 12 personnel. We have a tight end right here, another tight end-ish type of body as an H-back off the line, and then one running back. So one running back, two tight ends, that's 12 personnel. We're going to watch this big, long play fake from the offensive line here looking like outside zone. We'll watch the tailback cross the face of Watson, and then we'll watch Watson reverse out, and he's looking to get this defender, this edge rusher right here in conflict. Okay, so as this edge rusher comes off the field, he'll be or up the field, excuse me, he'll be completely unblocked. And Watson's trying to put him in conflict, thinking that there's only one of two things that he can do because they're going to drag this tight end across the field here, this H back, and then they're going to bring this tight end in a levels look a little bit deeper, kind of a, a partial flood route concept. So what the Texans are hoping is this defender comes up the field untouched as Watson reverses out. He can just dump it to this underneath H back and get the first down. Okay, but we're, what we're going to watch here is the play of the backside inside linebacker and man coverage. He sees the H back motion right here and he follows it all the way through. Usually this backside inside backer is playing cut back on outside zone, but because he has very disciplined eyes and sees that H leaking across, understanding man coverage, he will pick him up. And as the snap occurs, Watson's going to be in trouble right here. Okay. We've got our unblocked defender coming up and we have the backside inside ready to cover that crossing route, route of the H. Because he is unblocked, Watson's going to have to make a decision very quickly. He knows he can't throw that ball, it'll get picked, so now there's pressure. We talked about Watson being very difficult to bring down. We've seen this time and time again with him. So you got to get hats to the ball. You have to hustle, you have to pursue, you have to fundamentally tackle. It is nothing extravagant. There's no scheme for that. You got to have dudes willing to get to the ball as soon as you slow Watson up. You do that, you can either force throwaways or best case scenario, force a sack, okay? Very next play here. Now it's fourth and one right at the end of the first quarter. We're going to see a very, very similar look from Houston. You're going to put Randall Cobb in motion just to verify that you have man coverage. So FYI, anytime you see an offensive player go in motion and a defender go all the way with him instead of bumping, that's an indicator that it's man coverage. So Watson knows he has man coverage again, but he likes this look because now your backside insides are up on the line, okay? This is actually technically now the backside inside backer number 48, but you're going to see a very similar scenario play out. Edge will be unblocked coming into Watson's grill. H is going to come across the formation. They're going to really hope to hit that little drag route again, hoping that they have, were able to pull this backside inside in now with the motion. However, you're going to watch Baltimore be very sound again, crossing face. All of a sudden, we have our, our tight end crossing the face. We know we have to pick him up in man coverage. Unblocked off of the edge with coverage, forces a bad throw. Now the Texans are off the field, okay? So if you are sound with your eyes in the inside backer core, this is a staple play for Houston. They make a living off of this. So backside inside backers, if there's flow away, you got to snap your eyes across formation if you're in man coverage, all right? Uh, we'll take a look at the next play here, which is when they um, – when. 
Mr. Thomas started asking me about how to keep Watson in the pocket. So I'm guessing that most of you know what the pocket is supposed to look like for the offensive line, okay? But any edge rush should get past, uh, pushed back past that, what we call the top deck, okay? Or the heels of the quarterback in his initial stance or drop, okay? We should pass all these uh, edge rushers up this way. And then the front, the guard and the guards, excuse me, and center have to hold what's called the top of pocket. Meaning if Watson gets pressure up the sides and it looks like he's getting beat on the edge, these guys can create different escape routes or escape avenues for Watson out of here. And you'll see that happen on this play. As we run this forward, I want you to watch that top of pocket. We're gonna get great pressure up the front right here, but that top of pocket has dissipated. The center has done a great job of washing this out. We've got a five-man rush here. It's five on five, but the center's done a great job of walling off that two-eye or that nose tackle, and it gives Watson top of pocket. Now he can step up, see cleanly, step up through the pocket, and get this ball off to Randall Cobb for a gain of 15 on second and 12. So obviously that's not very good, but take a look at the time. 324 left in the third. So what Baltimore is going to do when they're facing this situation again, now they have a very similar formation, but it's first and 10. So what they're going to do is plug top of pocket right here when they bring pressure. Bam, top of pocket is plugged and they're going to keep it plugged on this play. You're still going to wash up. You actually have a disadvantage for the Ravens here. If we take a look, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight man protection. That's insane. That's two tight ends and a running back in. This is full max protection. And we have one, two, three, four, five rushers for the Ravens. But what happens when you get these edge rushers up the field and keep Watson in that playing contain, and then you maintain top of pocket integrity, all of a sudden you're going to watch that pocket dissipate quickly. Watson's going to go down for a sack. This is something Green Bay most certainly can do. If you have your big studs on the inside, your Montrevious Adams and your Kenny Clarks maintaining top of pocket integrity, you can use some of that outside pressure to also use contain, keep Watson in the pocket. You can get dude on the ground if you collapse that around him. Okay, if you let him outside contain, if you let him climb up through top of pocket, it's going to be a problem. Dude's going to go make plays. Now, the last one I'll show you, you guys, if, if you watched my video um, a little earlier in the week, you'll understand that I go nuts when defensive coordinators don't bring pressure in empty, which the Packers did not do against a very immobile quarterback in Tom Brady last week. So I am hoping to see this look from the Texans this week, and I'm really hoping to see Mike Pettin and Green Bay get aggressive on it. Here we have empty, one, two, three, four receivers, and a stand-up tight end, and an obvious passing situation, third and 11. So what's Baltimore gonna do? You guessed it, they're gonna bring fire. When you have empty, again, reminder, you can only run five man protection. You're gonna just straight up man protect this. So Baltimore, they're gonna be real smart. They're gonna bring six, one, two, three, four, five, six. What does six minus five equal? One, you're gonna have an unblocked defender right here off of the edge. The nickel's coming in, done a great job on top of pocket again. There is no escape lane coming through here because the mini stunt that happened between the three tech and the nose, and all of a sudden Watson is gonna get washed out, okay? You have to understand the kind of the con of bringing six is that now you only have five on five, okay? You're straight man, but check it. You're in good, good position here. Watson throws that ball hot. You got four shell defenders around it underneath. So you're gonna see a bit of a mesh pattern right here where you'll get an under route from what we would call our M receiver and an over route from what we would call our X receiver. And they're gonna just try to set that natural pick, but that takes some time to develop. So man coverage is still just fine here. You can play man, get a little aggressive, go get the quarterback, especially this week. This is a dude who is absolutely lethal if you give him time. If you thought Tom Brady was accurate, now put the athleticism of Deshaun Watson on Tom Brady's at, or, uh, throwing accuracy, and all of a sudden you're going to be in a world of hurt if you bring two, three, and four-man pressures and let this dude just sit back, okay? I would love to see Mike Pettin get aggressive, 
fire off some of those athletes that Green Bay has on the edge. Let some of those big boys plug up the middle, plug up the top of pocket, and get that quarterback on the ground, something that Green Bay has struggled to do quite a bit. Again, thanks for taking the time to view this video. My name is Coach Hawn on behalf of Packernet.com. Can't wait to see the games this weekend. I'm a football junkie. If you have questions for me, please keep firing them off via Packernet on Facebook or get a hold of Ryan and uh, any of his Packernet podcast avenues. Thanks for taking the time to see this and I'll talk to you all soon.